so today we are going to talk about data visualization best practice and um, what is our agenda for today. So um, first of all, we're going to talk about flow of data vis visualization. So what we need to consider when visualizing data, which steps uh, we need to go through. Uh, next, our part will be a chart types. So I will explain how to, how to choose appropriate chart for your data. And uh, next one is a uh, best practice. Yeah, so what to avoid, what to do, and uh, what is the best way to visualize your data. Uh, design and formatting, so why it's matter and what you should consider. And holistic dashboard, so uh, uh, I will tell you some general rules uh, for uh, best, best dashboards creation. So, flow of data visualization. So first step is uh, data preparation. I suppose all of you know about it and uh, it's a data cleansing, yeah, data preparation and um, just do everything to make your data prepared for um, clear and prepared for dashboards for reporting. So next step is uh, business questions. So uh, it's a very important part because on this part you need to you need to uh, answer a few questions which is on the right side so who is the audience so for example it depends if it's a c level of company or it's a um, analysts from company or financial or marketing team um, why it's matter because um, if it's a uh, dashboards for analysts, you should make it uh, deeper and with some deep dives and uh, level of granularity should be lower, yeah. And if it's uh, for C-levels, um, it should be just a general metrics and general overviews without, uh, without so, uh, so deeps as for analysts. Uh, next one is uh, how the visualization should be presented. Mm, could be that your um, dashboard will be printed and just on a paper. Uh, in this case, you, you can't add any filters, uh, drop downs and deep dives uh, because it will be not possible to, <laughs> to make any filtering on a paper and could it be possible that your dashboard will be presented on a big screen in meeting room yeah in this case it's possible to to use uh, use your filtering and your deep dives um, next one is a question about um, your client so um, you should ask them if um, if they know which questions they want to uh, answer and uh, that means that what is the main uh, point of this dashboard so which questions of this dashboard should answer so what is the insights that uh, uh, stakeholders want to get mm, the latest one is about metrics and calculation so before you start uh, preparing so something you, you, you should agree your metrics calculations you, you should know what you want to visualize mm, okay let's move to the next step select visual tools so uh, in case you already uh, choose your best bi tools uh, you want uh, you need to start with visualizations so it's like a chart yeah uh, we're going to to talk about this in our next slide so how to choose appropriate uh, chart Next uh, step is the rules of good design. So it's our best practice, yeah. Formatting, designing, and uh, so on. And the latest step, it's like a final step of your visualization is uh, share insights. So actually it's something that uh, really your uh, customers are interested in because uh, no one, when I just uh, talked about figures and looking for dashboards, they want to found some insights, uh, valuable insights, and um, 
to make some decision. Yeah. So it's a final step of your dashboard. Uh, now we're going to talk about chart types. So um, it's like a general diagram how to choose appropriate chart. Uh, I will uh, I will add a link to download this image if you need it. So um, now I just want to go through it uh, how to how to use it. So first of all, you wanna. Uh, you want to consider what do you want to sh sh show? Yeah, comparison, distribution, composition, or relationship. So, um, for example, you want to uh, show a revenue by months, yeah, for last two years. So, it's a uh, will be comparison. Yeah, so we're going to this way, uh, comparison, and then over time because we are going uh, talking about months yeah and uh, as, as i said we have 24 months two years it's uh, many periods so we can choose line chart for this purpose and uh, and so on so uh, also you can do the same for composition uh, also consider if you have many few periods uh, the same for relationship you want to see how how the revenue is related to uh, uh, quantity of your items which has been sold. So for example, you will have two variables here, revenue and uh, quantity of items. Uh, also, it's possible to visualize uh, three items in bubble chart and so on. And we're going to talk about all of those charts uh, a little bit deeper in next next slide. So comparison over time what uh, why we need it so uh, we can compare values across different categories um, here i added uh, four charts which are uh, the best one for this comparison over item so column chart clustered column chart uh, bar chart and uh, spider chart uh, column and bar charts are very sim uh, similar to each other but for example column chart we can use if we have a few items uh, maybe from one to five and so on bar chart we can use yeah for more um, more categories yeah here i added that it should be 12 categories um, clustered column chart and you can use when you're comparing multiple categories by groups for example, you have a, um, a few countries, yeah, for five countries, and uh, for each country, you want to visualize um, revenue by, by, by genre, yeah, something like this. Uh, spider chart, usually um, we can use for benefits in company. So each of this line will be some benefit. And uh, this spider chart um, will show uh, this um, of different benefits or future features of product. Uh, also, I added some tips uh, with uh, that you need to rank chronologically uh, and choose color strategically and label that. But we're going to talk about uh, this a little bit later. So comparison over time. Mm, main chart to represent comparison over time is a line chart. Also, it's possible to use multiple chart, a multiple line chart if you need to add uh, more categories, not just uh, timeline, uh, but also, for example, in few category, few, uh, few countries and or, or products and uh, so on. Area chart, um, it's also uh, useful to show a uh, volume of something here, yeah, some um, metric sales or revenue admissions uh, quantity and so on. So comparison over time, we are using when we want to show some metric uh, over a period of time. A line chart for um, long period, yeah. For many periods, multiple chart, line chart. If we need to add some additional 
uh, metric uh, category step chart. Um, if we have a um, time frame by hours, yeah, we need to show by hours, not by months, and area chart to, to show a volume of your metric. Uh, tips are also similar to previous one uh, about colors and uh, labels and uh, what is uh, what is important. Don't use a lot of lines in multiple uh, multiple line chart. The best way yeah, it's uh, four or five lines. Um, okay, six will be also fine, but uh, <laughs> not, not uh, please do not add. Uh, 10 lines and tomorrow will be a mess, just a mess. What to do if you need, if you need more than five? Mm, you can add, uh, you can use another chart on, or filter it. Mm -hmm. For example, mm, you can add additional filter to your dashboard and just uh, filter for needed uh, category. Mm -hmm. Uh, composition. It's a part of all relationship. Yeah. Uh, common way to use uh, to show it is a stacked bar. So um, yeah, you can show a sales by product broken by region. Yeah. So on um, x axis you can add uh, products, and for colors you can split by region. It's a common way to to just to show to display the part of all relationship. Uh, also useful could be a tree map, mm, but it's in case that uh, your categories are uh, sim similar in their volume. Yeah, because uh, in case you have one categories for which took ninety percent of your. Um, whole part yeah it doesn't make sense make sense because uh, others other categories will be too small and waterfall it's very useful uh, for example for employees for member uh, members uh, membership of some loyalty program for example um, or also new existing lost customers you can split in waterfall uh, chart so uh, this the latest bar will uh, will show a total amount and those uh, small bars will display your um, for example teams department and so on by mm, ring chart so actually it's better to avoid it but we will talk about it later i suppose that um, uh, you know about this that uh, everybody saying that pie chart is not a best practice and so on, but um, I will show you some examples when we can use it, but we need to follow some rules to, uh, to use pie charts. Yeah, um, in all of those charts, it's better to avoid 3D, uh, especially for, for pie. Mm. Start the axis from zero. It's also a very important rule. Uh, so, um, as a conclusion, yeah, composition. So we can show part of all relationship. Uh, the best way is a stacked bar, and uh, in some in some situation, we can use waterfall tree map and firing chart. Um, okay. Next one is a distribution. So to show the frequency of uh, some of some values yeah, in your data set, you can use histogram and scatter plot. Uh, yeah, the best uh, the best way is uh, histogram maybe for uh, age group. You want to show your customers from uh, 10 to 20 years, from 20 to 40 years, and uh, each bar will, will represent this age uh, age group. And a scatter plot, yeah, also could be uh, useful for individuals, yeah, by, by head and weight, and uh, to show how many customers uh, we have in those uh, those categories. Uh, 
next one is uh, correlation. So we need to understand relationship, yeah, two or three variables. Mm, the main way to represent two variables uh, correlation is a scatter plot. Uh, we can show correlation between the yeah, customer age and uh, revenue, for example, yeah, and uh, revenue and uh, sold items, quantity of sold items. If we need to uh, add one more variables and show three variables correlation, we can use part, uh, bubble chart because in bubble chart we also will have uh, two variables on x and y axis. Yeah, and also a uh, third variable will be a size of this bubble. And hit grid is like a table, mm, so you will have uh, some. Mm, matrix here and here on y and x axis and um, also your uh, cell will be uh, highlighted mm, depends of your uh, volume of your variable mm, so correlation yeah we can show in bubble scatter plot and hit grid to show relationship between your uh, variables uh, next one is allocation. Uh, yeah, uh, looks like it's yeah. You, you can see that it's uh, easy to uh, present location because we can use a map. Uh, HBI tools uh, have it, but um, which map you should use? Uh, because uh, we have bubble map, heat map, and semantic map. Mm, population uh, by state, yeah, mm, the best way to show it will be semantic map because we can show uh, location areas and so on. Mm, if, if we are talking about sales, better to use bubble map to see, uh, to show uh, some points where, where you have the highest uh, sales and the highest revenue. Mm, heat map, mm, it also could be used for sales, but better for mm, interest in the same location. So also you can use a location and map, but better heat map for interested uh, of some products and uh, and categories and so on. So, um, what is the tips here? What is important? Uh, zoom properly. Yeah. If uh, you have a data just for a few countries, it haven't uh, any sense mm, to show all uh, all map for all uh, world. Yeah. Better to zoom just to your countries. Um, okay. So, yeah. Mm, first part we have finished about uh, charts, how to use appropriate chart for your data. Mm, I know that it's a lot of information, but uh, this presentation uh, will be published somewhere and uh, you can go through it one more time <laughs> after our presentation. Um, next part is the best practice. Mm, each of these steps we can consider on uh, on the next slide, but uh, let me guide you through all of them. So avoid misleading visualization. Uh, improve easy to understanding. Yeah, that you uh, you should understand you should understand that your visualization should be very clear and uh, simple and understandable. Next one is a control chart uh, for time series variation. I will show you what is a control chart and why do we need it. Uh, time for design and formatting. I will also explain why it's matter on uh, real examples. Mm, holistic story, not a single chart. It's very important to not uh, put a lot of charts on one dashboard which are not uh, related. Uh, it's haven't doesn't make sense. 
we need to create a story. So one dashboard should be a story from one chart to another. We can we should deep dive from one chart from PI to and uh, deeper deeper uh, through all of your charts. It should be like a story. And always double think before adding <laughs> something to make it more fancy, like in this example. Uh, yeah, because it's not not always a good idea to make something more fancy. <laughs> Could be a lot of it. <laughs> so best practice number one: avoid misleading visuals. 3D. Mm, you should remember that you should always avoid them at all costs. And why? Uh, here you you can see two the uh, same charts by charts. Uh, one of it is uh, 3D and second one is a normal one. Um, how do you think uh, is a blue or red one part of uh, market? Yeah, is uh, hi higher. So in this chart, 3D looks like the blue one uh, has a higher market uh, place than uh, red. Uh, if we are not looking for a label scene. Mm, but in real, in real, uh, red market share, yeah, uh, is, has a higher, uh, higher score or higher percent of total. Mm, it's an example from real presentation. I suppose you know what is the presentation. And sometimes uh, companies are using this trick <laughs> to to present their their company, yeah. And uh, it could be useful, but uh, not for your <laughs> clients, not for analysts, just for marketing. Uh, next one is uh, bar chart. So look at the uh, example, this one. Uh, how do you think, is it the big difference between uh, those three products? Yeah, looking for this chart, I can, I can see that, yeah, the difference is really big. But, sorry, let's go to the chart, which is the same but starting from zero axis. And you can see that uh, actually those products are the same. So difference is very low. What is the problem? The problem is that first, our first uh, chart is not starting from zero, but uh, next one is started from zero. So it's a main rule to start all your charts from zero axis. So also I added a few examples from uh, real TV channels. Uh, when um, someone created a chart which are not started from zero yet to show that the difference is very big when it's not so big. Um, Area charts. As I said, area charts could be useful for uh, some station, but it's not could be uh, it's not could be used when uh, we are talking about trends. We cannot show a trend uh, by area chart. Uh, okay, let's start from our first chart. How do you think how is the product be performing over time? Hmm, looks like it's going up, yeah, it's growing. But uh, in the next bar chart, it's the same data, just visualizing in a stacked bar chart. You can see that a part of this B product actually is the same in each quarter. See it? Mm -hmm. And, but it's also not the best way to visualize this data. Wow, now we have a line chart and we can clearly see our trend in product B that it's not, 
changing over time just a little bit yeah so uh, going back you can see that it's very important to choose appropriate chart for your data and uh, array chart couldn't, couldn't be used uh, for a trend visualization okay pie charts i said previously that we're going to talk about this yeah pie charts are bad in almost all <laughs> almost all situation but uh, if um, why it's bad in this first visualization you see uh, three almost the same pie charts yeah but uh, if we visualize this data in bar chart you can see that uh, data is different so without without labels yeah just uh, categories you you cannot clearly understand it from pie chart so but uh, also uh, i found a um, topic from one of the um, design theorist yes yeah, that uh, the only thing for that a pie chart is uh, several of them but also uh, the same theorist said that uh, in some uh, in some cases we can use pie chart if we don't need to clearly understand the volume of your data you want to just see the comparison and um, this uh, chart is um, a chart from um, Tableau experts, yeah, which uh, visualize, visualize the data in this way. Uh, here is a lot of pie charts, but uh, you can see the general trend in this visualization. So you cannot clearly say that, yeah, okay, it, in California, so example, uh, other categories took uh, 40 or 60 percent of total no you cannot say it but based on this chart you can say that mm, in california we have other uh, categories much more that in for example mm, west virginia yeah so uh, you can you can see here just a general trend of your data here is a few rules to use the pie chart and donut chart. So uh, they should be well formatted, no 3D. Yeah, we have already talked about this. Display norm, nominal variables, add to 100% and contains positive numbers. Display a single point of time. And uh, what is very important, only have two or three sli slides. You please don't add more than at least three, four slides at least, because it also will be a mess. Mm, what is a control chart and why do we need it? For example, uh, I will say I will say I will uh, say that our sales are down twenty percent from last week. Is it bad or it's uh, normal? So. Uh, to, to understand it, we need to go back a few weeks ago and uh, to, to show the trend charts. Yeah, uh, is it okay is it 20% down uh, our sales or it's not okay? Uh, it's possible to add a control chart. Uh, it's possible in Tableau, I know for sure. Um, to add uh, lines between which your uh, variation will be normal. Okay, next best practice uh, is uh, colors. So you need to allocate time to design and formatting uh, why it's matter. Um, because uh, first of all, uh, people are looking for uh, colors and shapes and charts, not for uh, figures and labels. So uh, in colors, we have three different uh, types, how we can represent our colors. colors. Categorical, uh, you can use 
each color for different categories. For example, you want to show a value by countries. Yeah, you can use different color for each country. Sequential, uh, if you want to show um, your metric from lower to higher, for example, sales, you can represent sales from lower to higher uh, using sequential colors. And um, the last one, uh, diverging uh, two color schemes with critical midpoint value. Uh, from um, lower to higher or from negative to positive. So it also could be that uh, in the, on the left uh, hand we will have a red values yeah, negative, midpoint will be white and positive values will be green. So the rule of good design in colors would, will be following. Use soft colors. Uh, use intense colors only to draw attention. Use the same color um, during the, all your uh, dashboard for the same categories. If you, uh, you have already choose the red one here for this country, please use the same red color uh, for the same country in another chart. And um, also, and use a single natural background color, yeah, not red, not, not green, uh, just could be a gray, a little uh, light gray or white, black, and um, not for a dashboard, yeah, my presentation has a black <laughs> background, but it's a presentation, it's a little bit different from a dashboard. Um, for dashboards, yeah, better to know. If you print it out, yeah, it's not the best way to print this presentation, I suppose. <laughs> and uh, use color standards for brands and region. Yeah, if you are visualizing some uh, some brand uh, data and this brand already has uh, own colors, please use those colors for identification of your brand. Mm, format style. So grid lines and labels. Um, to, uh, to, to show a uh, proceed figures, please use labels because uh, without them, it's not always uh, it's not always clearly understandable uh, the uh, the value of your data. Yeah, and uh, also it's possible that your chart, uh, your dashboard will be um, printed. And in this way, we will not have uh, two tips and uh, should be uh, labels on your chart. And grid lines, um, it's easier to, 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 to find yeah, uh, the volume of your data. Yeah, because if we haven't grid lines, you should draw it, you should draw imaginary line to make comparison between uh, bars. Mm, fonts. Uh, yeah, so why it's matter? I suppose that this one, it's not very readable, yeah, and, and clear for you, and better to read white and normal text. So uh, Tableau experts uh, selected few few fonts, which are uh, the best for dashboards, for visualization. Here is all of them, which, um, which you can use during your uh, dashboard creation. And the best way is to use uh, one font through all report. Yeah, uh, you can just choose appropriate formatting. So example, bold uh, for titles and light for tooltips and normal for charts, but uh, it should be one font. And uh, if you choose, it's also possible that you used uh, different fonts, uh, but you should go through all your presentation uh, to make that it's consistent. For example, filters uh, are in one font and titles uh, have another font, but everywhere should be the same font. 
in each titles on each dashboard should be the same. Okay, we finished with our best practice, we finished uh, with our charts and so on. And um, our last part will be holistic dashboards. So I added uh, here a screenshot from one uh, dashboard and what is not okay here. So based on our, uh, our uh, talk about best practice and what should we avoid and how to make it not a lot of fan not much more fancy but uh, but good so what is not okay here as for me it's a mess because i can't understand here anything do you understand what's what's going on here what is about i i don't uh, i don't i don't see a uh, main purpose on the, of this dashboard. Um, there's I would split not... it. I would split all the information in four or five slides. Yeah, yeah, it's a good idea because it's a lot. Uh, if we will count it, it's uh, more than 10, more than 10 chart on one dashboard, yeah. Uh, not formatted <laughs> and not the same um, font yeah, used, um, not highlighted main, uh, main figures, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's the best way to split it by few dashboard, format it well, and um, in the next slide, uh, we will talk about those rules. So the first one is the rule of five seconds. So you should provide the relevant information in about five seconds. So when you just opened your dashboard, in five seconds, uh, you should understand what is about. So what is the main purpose of this dashboard in five seconds? In this dashboard, I cannot in 30 seconds do it in five minutes or maybe. I maybe <laughs> need a few minutes to understand what's going on here. So five second line, uh, second rule. Next rule is, uh, Round your numbers, so uh, it doesn't make sense to add more uh, a lot of details. And uh, next one is uh, minimalist, less is more. So the best way is to add five, at least nine visualization to one dashboard. Okay, uh, I can I can go back, but as you remember. In previous uh, dashboard, we had we had much more than nine <laughs> charts. Yeah, so if we have more, just split to few dashboards. It's it's okay to have not one dashboard but few of them in one uh, in one report. Mm, choosing the right data visualization. Yeah, we have already talked about this. I have shown you why it's matter uh, to display in appropriate way your data uh, be consistent uh, yeah it means that uh, you need to use one color so the same colors yeah during all report as the same font during all the report uh, don't make a mess in your dashboard and give your numbers context yeah mm, to help your um, viewers understand if it's good or bad, don't display just uh, KPIs. So, for example, uh, let's consider this one KPI. Uh, it's possible to show you yeah, just absolute value, but is it bad or good? The best way is to add a comparison with previous months or previous year and with budget. As, as you can see, here we have this comparison. Mm. And the latest one is a logical lay layout. Yeah, mm. so when someone just opened your dashboard, they are looking on the top and uh, then going down. 
So uh, the main information, like KPIs, general figures as revenue, sales, and so on, should be uh, displayed on the top. And from the top to the bottom, we are um, deep diving, like, yeah, so sales by months and uh, by um, categories and so on. Uh, uh, about filters, uh, it's possible to add a filters on the right side or on the top if if you have a um, free free space here uh, yeah it's an example uh, for my opinion um, not not bad dashboard yeah it's uh, could be like a holistic dashboard so we have relevant information it's uh, easy to understand clear and um, with uh, uh, all all our rules <laughs> um, actually it's all from my side for today uh, here is a useful links um, helpful will be resources for you for color palettes uh, I'm using all of them uh, and uh, some the second link is a chart so that a suggestion image uh, which I have shown you on, on the first slides. Um, interesting TED videos on data visualization. Um, yeah, a lot of uh, interesting information. And some books if you, if you, if you wanna uh, deep dive on data visualization best practice. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's slides for um, other right. questions, yeah. <laughs> Mm, yes, from my side, uh, that's all. Thank you. If you have any question, we can we can talk about this now, <laughs> or also you can ask me later. I will I will share my contacts. No one, nothing. Okay, uh, may I ask you, uh, is it, uh, is it was uh, interesting for you? Have, have you found something new? Yeah, it is, it was interesting. I found yeah. so thank you. It was interesting for me. So data visualization is so general. Uh, it's a general problems happens in my project, so it, was useful for me. Thank you. Uh, by the way, have you used uh, like uh, in your practice this web or network uh, chart? I'm not sure how exactly the name of this chart. You, you showed it on one of the. Do you slides. mean spider chart? Yeah, spider chart. Spider chart. Uh, Actually, I, I, I don't have uh, such uh, data. <laughs> I don't have uh, such clients with such data. Uh, so, no, for now, uh, I didn't use it. It's not so um, <laughs> so com common use chart. Yeah, mm -hmm. common use are bar charts, line charts, yeah, and KPIs for me. <laughs> okay, thanks. I use it. Yeah, we use it for some as one of the clients was yeah. Um, yeah, pretty useful, I would say. I can share later and have it in hand. And we have also while interviewing people, we have this uh, people profile, like for example, BI or database, like at least two axes, right? And we have like target, like maximum knowledge and what particular candidate has for the database or for BI or for other access and yeah it's pretty convenient to try to see in the comparison the different skill sets uh, comparing to the target one. But how you compare? You, you compare uh, overall area in spider chart? Uh, yeah so the, how to say uh, or just visually? 
Yeah, well, visually, but yeah, visually and the, so for example, we have this triangle, so the correct triangle, bigger one, and inside you have some smaller ones, and you can see like on three axis compared to the bigger, to the, the maximum values, to the actual values versus the maximum. For me, spider uh, I suppose charts. For such, uh, sorry. Uh, I suppose such um, uh, approach uh, picture uh, possibility to to see all picture uh, in general, uh, all uh, qualities of candidate. For example, as for me, uh, in, in, in such approach, you can use uh, spider diagram. Uh, for me, uh, to understand spider diagram is uh, the best way when you match two spider diagrams and you put one uh, over another and you see the difference uh, in different areas uh, and it's the best way to understand, uh, spider, uh, to use spider charts. Oh, I, I'll give you an example. Just, Ira, are you, can you share? Uh, have you sent it? Yeah. Just a second. Skype. You can share it. Okay, one moment. I will open it. Um, it just, we did a like con small consulting for one of the clients. One moment. Yeah, can, you process, can see. Mm -hmm. Process readiness. Right, and uh, you can see that uh, there are three axes, like data sources, it's one X, like how well data sources are prepared. Another axis in information quality, how good the quality of information and, and third axis is like data warehouse uh, ready, prepared for the data analysis, right? And for different departments, like you, you can see six triangles, sales, marketing, inventory, marketing, inventory. So there are different departments of the company and you can see like for each department this like short analysis, how well data sources are prepared, how good quality of information is and how well data warehouse is prepared. And you can see, for example, here that customer care is the, the the best one, right? The department has the better data sources, information quality, and data warehouse. Right? Yeah, as for me, it's pretty good visualization example. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I got it. Same Thank thing. you, my friend, for your example. Uh, is someone wanna? Talk about something or ask. <laughs> yeah, I will share the presentation. I know that it's a lot of information here, uh, but I will share it on the conference page and share the link. And uh, feel free to contact me <laughs> if you need anything.